Hello, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Arbaz and uh, the topic of uh, the lecture is maxillomandibular relationship. Specifically, we'll be talking about uh, and discussing about centric relationship. So, this is a lecture for class of 2023. Moving on. The learning outcomes expected from you from this lecture are as follows. You should be able to describe centric relationship. You should be able to classify methods used for recording centric relation and you should describe the significance of recording centric relationship. Once the correct vertical dimension orientation relationship has been determined and established, the necessary interoclusal distance of freeway space has been made. The jaw relationship in the horizontal plane can be commenced. Horizontal jaw relationship is in simple meaning is, is the recording of the bite registration. It is also known as centric relationship. It is a reproducible position which can be repeatedly arrived at and thus serves as a reliable guide to develop centric occlusion in artificial dentures. It is a starting point for arrangement of artificial teeth to develop maximum anticipation in complete dentures. Coming to the definition of uh, centric relationship. It is a maxillomandibular relationship independent of tooth contact in which the condyles articulate in the anterior superior position against the posterior slopes of articular eminence. In this position, the mandible is restricted to a purely rotatory movement. And from this unrestrained physiologic maxillomandibular relationship, the patient can make vertical, lateral and protrusive movements. It is a clinically useful repeatable reference point according to GPT-9. So as I mentioned, centric relationship is a relationship of the condyle that is, it is the anterior superior relationship of the condyle against the posterior slopes of the articular eminence of the clinoid fossa. It is an unrestrained uh, physiologic position in which the condyles purely rotate, that is, they exhibit a purely rotatory movement without any translation. So, coming to the importance of centric relationship, why it has so much importance in prosthodontics and complete denture fabrication. Centric relationship is directly related to the proprioceptive impulses of the patient. In a dentulous patient, these impulses are generated by the periodontal ligament. However, in the edentulous patient, there are no periodontal ligaments, so there is no proprioception, mechanoreception, etc. In a edentulous patient, the these uh, what you call uh, sensors are transferred to the temporomandibular joint. So the centric relationship act as this proprioceptive center that is the TMJ in, in case of endonatulous patients acts as a proprioceptive centers guiding the operator and in the patient and the patient to close in the ideal maxillomandibular relationship. Now so the salient features of centric relationship are it is as I mentioned before it is a learnable, repeatable and recordable position which remains constant throughout the life. It is a definitive entity so it can be used as a reference point in establishing centric occlusion that is in during horizontal jaw relation. So what are the various methods of retrieving the mandible so that the mandible can be brought to the centric relation position which is a bone to bone position whereas centric occlusion is a tooth to tooth, tooth uh, position. First is the physiologic method in which the patient is asked to repeatedly swallow. The second is patient is asked to take his tongue or fold his tip of the tongue backwards towards the junction of the hard and the soft palate. And the third is to guide the mandible to the centric relationship manually by keeping the index finger on the buccal flanges of the mandibular record base and the thumb over the chin and gently guiding the patient's mandible in a posterior and superior direction. The mandibular closism are gently tapped with finger. This will automatically ask the uh, make the patient retro the mandible sort of a reflex action when somebody claps their fingers in front of your face suddenly your eyes shut so in the same way when you tap your fingers on the occlusal rims suddenly the patient by uh, default or by an inherent mechanism retrodes the mandible now coming to the various methods for recording the centric uh, there are different methods the first one is the interocclusal check record or what we also know as recording jaw relation or maxillary mandibular relationship using wax occlusal ribs these can be recorded by applying pressure or without applying pressure while the patient is biting in centric relationship are now advocated in 1923 that while recording centric relationship pressure should not be applied 
that is the patient should not be guided uh, to close in centric by the operator because of the resiliency of the uh, tissues under the record basis. Others like Shiler Payne and Trapezano advocated that some or slight pressure should be applied while the patient is closing in centric or while the operator is guiding the patient in centric. The next uh, method of recording centric relationship is the functional method. In this we have needle method, house method which is also known as needle and house method, we have Patterson method, we have Mayer's method etc. These are basically functional recording in which the patient is made to do certain movements of the mandible to record the horizontal jaw relationship. The third is a graphic method as the name suggests just like how we draw on a graph using a stencil in the same way using uh, devices known as intraoral and extraoral tracers the patient is um, made to do certain movements excursive and uh, lateral torsive movements and these movements are then recorded on a central bearing plate which will be uh, discussed later. So these are our regular record basis maxillary mandible occlusal rim. They are first uh, established at the proper lip fullness, uh, cheek fullness, at the proper level of the occlusal plane, proper incisive visibility, parallelism to the alert regal line, etc. And then they are uh, uh, closed in centric relationship by guiding the patient's mandible. And then this recording is then sealed with the hot spatula and by making markings on the wax. This is a, not a new technique, this has been very old and most widely used technique. Some operators also prefer to make notches and grooves on the closed surface of the opposing rims and then these grooves are filled with either a softened wax or green stick modeling compound or a plaster uh, index is also made. So now coming to the function of the chewing methods, these methods as I mentioned utilize the functional movements of the jaws to record a centric relationship such as protrusive and latrotrusive uh, movement. The first method as I mentioned was the needle house method. Uh, in this method basically compound occlusal rims are used with four metal styli or studs are placed in the premolar and molar area of the maxillary occlusal rim. So instead of a wax rim we have a compound rim in which four styli are, pla are placed two on either side of the ridge that is on the occlusal surface then the patient is asked to make movements in protrusive, retrusive uh, and latrotrusive uh, directions and these styli which are in the compound maxillary occlusal rim they make grooves or notches in the mandibular rim which are diamond shaped and the posterior most point of this diamond pattern is considered as a centric relationship and then patient is guided into the posterior most part of this uh, uh, diamond pattern and plaster or any type, uh, any type of uh, mouth temperature or uh, uh, regular wax is used to seal the upper and lower ribs. So this is how the back occlusal uh, rims will look. Uh, of course these rims were made out of compound and four studs were advocated by needle. Later house advocated uh, instead of studs to use uh, four pointed uh, sharp styli. So these styles were placed in the premolar and molar areas and then the mandibular rim which was made out of wax and then the patient was asked to close in first in centric relation and then he was guided to do protrusive left lateral right lateral excursive movements. This created a diamond the posterior part of the diamond this is the centric relationship and the other parts are the and this over here is the protrusive movement and this is a left lateral this is a right lateral movement. So these were instead of uh, studs, uh, house advocated the use of stand. So that was the only difference between the needle and the method. The second was the Patterson method. The Patterson method used wax occlusal rim. First a trench or a trough was made along the length of the mandibular rim, something like a channel. And a one to one mix of plaster and carborundum paste was loaded or packed in this trench or trough in the mandibular rim. Then the patient was asked to generate uh, mandibular movements protrusive and excursive movements and this these continuous function movements generated a something like compensative curves in the uh, occlusal surface of the mandibular occlusal rim that is the carburetor plaster mix was ground and it was pushed uh, anterior posteriorly and medial laterally in the form of a compensative curves like curve of Spee, curve of Wilson etc. So this was Patterson's method so here a trough was created it was filled with the carburetor and plaster one is to one mix and the patient was asked to do all excursive movements and this generated compensative curves in the plaster carburetor mix.
So the disadvantage of the function method is that they involve lateral and anteroposterior displacement of the record bases in relation to the uh, basal tissues and supporting bone. So if the ridges are not tall, well rounded because of the excessive function movement the patient generates, this may, recur, uh, this may result in distortion of the movement of the record bases resulting in inaccurate recording of the centric. Others like Green advocated the use of pumice and plaster in one of the rims and instructed the patient to grind the rims together. Uh, this was somewhat similar to Patterson method. Then another technique in which Mayer advocated the use of soft wax occlusal rim which were then covered with tin foil and then were lubricated with oil and the patient was asked to perform functional movements like swallowing, grinding, excursive and protrusive movements and this shaped the wax of the upper and lower rims and then uh, these were then packed outside with uh, plaster. Uh, to create an index and then the rims were removed and uh, depend and depending on the counter of these uh, indexes the T setting was done. So the next method or the group of methods is the graphic method as I mentioned. Graphic method mainly involves uh, uh, either an arrow point tracing which is also known as gothic arch tracing or a pantograph uh, which is used to record the um, uh, horizontal jaw relationship in a three dimensional state. So coming to the internal traces or gothic arch traces uh, which are a part of uh, in, uh, uh, in gothic arch traces. So the, in this a central bearing device is attached to the occlusal rim. So here we can see that uh, a central bearing device is attached to the maxillary, uh, central plate is attached to the maxillary occlusal rim and a central bearing device is attached to the mandibular occlusal rim. It has a spring loaded plunger or stylae in the center of the central bearing plate. And this spring loaded stylae makes an arrow shaped uh, mark on the central bearing plate in the maxillary occlusal rim. Something like this. This, uh, this is assembly. One, is, one plate is attached to the maxilla, another plate with the stylae is attached to the mandible. And it creates an arrow mark. So, why? what is the significance of this arrow mark? The tip of the arrow is your centric relation. That is where the patient has to bite and it is then sealed off with a hot instrument or with a stapler pins or with a, a green sea compound or anything and the two sloping acute sides of the arrow represent the uh, lateral torsing movements like for if you are seeing uh, the patient jaw from an inferior view the sides of the arrows are created by the left lateral and the right lateral movement of the mandible. As you can see, this will generate the two sides of the arrow and the straight uh, bar of the arrow or the tail of the arrow is created by the protrusive movement of the mandible. So always the tip of the arrow will be pointing towards the throat of the patient. Now, so this is how uh, Internal tracer looks, the central bearing plate is attached to the upper maxillary occlusal rim and the central bearing plate with the plunger or the stylus is attached to the mandibular rim. And the patient is then asked to do protrusive left lateral and right lateral excursive movements. And this generates an arrow on the central bearing plate on the maxillary rim. This usually this, uh, this central plate or a sheet of metal is first coated with either with soot that is uh, by passing it over a flame or a candle or it is coated with a thin layer of a, uh, plaster or a thin layer of inlay wax. So this is how the center bearing uh, plunger or styling makes the marking on the uh, upper uh, plate of the intraoral tracer. And this is the arrow pointing towards the throat of the patient. So now, now coming to the disadvantage of these tracers, these tracers, interval tracers are not visible during the uh, procedure that is the operator cannot guide the patient, he only has to trust his judgment that a patient is able to understand his instructions. It may require multiple repeated attempts to create a proper uh, ideal arrow of the centric relationship. The size of the tracing is sometimes very small it is, and it is difficult to determine the apex of the tracing. Okay, now coming to the extraoral tracing devices, they are essentially similar to the internal tracing devices but the central bearing plate assembly is outside the patient mouth that is it is attached by a fork to the exterior of the wax uh, rims it is protruding out of the patient's mouth so uh, also the, it has a large central bearing plate so the tracing arrow is uh, larger in size it is uh, easy to identify the apex of the 
so these are the center bearing uh, plate with the plunger uh, center bearing plates which are attached first to the uh, this sorry this is the type of the intraoral tracer and this on the right side is what we see the extraoral tracers both extraoral gothic arch tracers so these folks or the prongs are attached to the upper and lower wax rims and this is the center bearing plate and this is the plunger or styli which makes a marking on the center bearing plate of the uh, uh, of this assembly here we can see more clearly so in this the styli or the plunger is attached to the upper rim and the central bearing plate is attached to the lower rim and then it creates a arrow shaped marking so so what are the indications for these graphic methods whether it will be internal tracers or external tracer they should be used as i mentioned in well healed broad indentural spaces or tall rounded ridges because we need proper or absolute stability of the occlusal rims or the record bases during the tracing so if there is some first of all records should be made with uh, heat cured polymethylmethacrylate which has a good fit and uh, intimate contact with the basal seat area it uh, the patient's intra uh, inter arch space should be adequate and patient needs to be trained with uh, to close in centric that is patient should be habitual centric closer now what is the contraindication as i mentioned if there are severely resolved ridges the bases will be, uh, the record bases will be unstable and you will not get a proper tracing or failure to get a proper tracing in case of excessively flabby and hyperplastic ridges uh, and, and when there is decreased vertical dimension of uh, occlusion and uh, vertical dimension at rest in patients with existing temporomandibular joint arthropathy or disorder or patient with restricted TMG movements so in such cases we cannot use uh, graphic uh, tracing methods for recording the horizontal next in line uh, is within the graphic method is the pantographic tracing now uh, pantographic tracing is designed defined as a graphic method of mandibular movement in three planes as registered by a styli on a recording table or a flag of a pantographic instrument tracings of the mandible movements are recorded on the plates in horizontal as well as the sagittal planes so it is a three dimensional tracer it is the most accurate method available to record the centric relationship or the mandibular movements in essential a pantograph is uh, derived from two greek words which mean all every and to write it is a mechanical device with two interconnecting pens or styli so that when the movement of one pen or tracing with one pen is done an identical image is produced with the second pen so basically that's what a pantograph is this was used in days probably in the early 19th century to make copyright drawings that is to copy drawings identically so this is how a pantograph looks this is the first pen that creates a small heart shaped uh, sketch and depending on the movements of this first pen a second pen creates a identical albeit larger drawing of the heart shape uh, sketch so this is what essentially a pantograph does which is attached to the uh, by a device to the patient's uh, jaws and when the patient does the mandibular protrusive and lateral movements the same movements are copied on the pantographic uh, plate or flag by the tracer or the tracing tape so uh, so as a, a pantograph has six flags that is four flags in the horizontal plane and two flags in the sagittal plane so here we see two flags in the anterior region these are the styli that create the uh, recording of the mandibular movements and the pinpointing of the centric relationship these are post two posterior flags that are with plungers to create the uh, posterior movements and uh, we have two flags which are not visible in this picture on the side of the patient face patient face that is over the tmj which create the or copy the movements of the mandible in the sagittal plane. So uh, coming to uh, the summary, centric relationship is a reproducible position which can be repeatedly arrived at and this serves as a reliable guide to develop centric occlusion in artificial denture. That is when the centric relationship records are taken, the jaw relationship is uh, accomplished. The records are transferred to the 
articulator mounted and then the teeth setting can be so if you have recorded a accurate centric relationship then the teeth setting that is done in this centric relationship is your centric occlusion so recording centric by using various methods of retruding the mandible is the starting point of arrangement of the artificial teeth to develop the maximum intercuspation in complete dentures so thank you all for a patient hearing i'll see you again with another lecture